Hi, everyone. This is Jason Bierak of Wall Street from Main Street. Welcome back to another Wall Street from Main Street podcast interview. So instead of the normal interview format today, I was contacted by Ken Amaduri. He wanted he wanted to discuss the lithium market. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, I heard a story. Uh, I was up in Toronto two years ago. Uh, Sprott invited me up there and people were asking Rick Rule, who's, you know, known as Mr. Commodity about the lithium market up there. And two years ago in 2016, Rick Rule said that the lithium market is a fad. There's a huge oversupply. It's going to crash. Don't waste your time there. So our special guests today are Ken Amaduri of Crush the Street, who has been researching the lithium market, and Stefan Schaus, director of Wealth Minerals, a near-term lithium developer with projects in Chile. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Jason, yeah. thanks for having us. So, Thank um, you, Jason. So let, let's go in depth on the lithium market because it seems like a very interesting market. I, I didn't learn a lot about it because obviously I listened to what Rick Roll said. But uh, when I started reading articles today to prepare for this interview, it seems that there's a lot going on in lithium. So what, why do you think then Rick Roll is wrong about the lithium market now? Well, uh, Jason, this is Stefan. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, that we have to look at the lithium market as an as an seesaw market uh, in the moment because we are just in such an infant stage of this market really taking off. Yeah, um, you have to see at the um, you know at the tried and true applications for lithium in the past, which have been you know uh, being great definitely, um, and that is the consumer product market. Yeah, with everything turning to lithium battery cells inside devices um, as, as additional uh, you know, power banks and, and whatnot. But this is a minuscule market of what we uh, will really see coming up in the next couple of years and then dramatically grow over um, a decade or two. Um, and this is uh, lithium consumption in electric vehicles. Electric vehicles take round about, uh, I saw some articles about like 10,000 times the amount of a uh, uh, of a lithium battery in a, in a cell phone, and that in fact is just the beginning. Because um, as uh, we love our cars, when we love our uh, our ability to f uh, to roam freely in that market, we have um, uh, uh, we we have some range anxiety when it comes to electric vehicles. Now, this has been you know. Uh, uh, well, showcase that this is not really the case when you do the approach of Tesla. And Tesla has uh, quite a lot of um, energy uh, stored in battery banks in their cars, by far more than all of the other car manufacturers put in their cars, like Toyota with their Prius. Um, and so, but we already hear from the side of the legislation that uh, combustion engines will be prohibited over the next decade in, uh, in, in a lot of markets. And everybody is moving towards electric mobility um, as, the, um, as the propulsion of choice for um, individual uh, traffic. So having said this, in, in some ominous terms, yeah, what does this really mean? Uh, when we look at the recent announcement that um, Volkswagen um, made uh, by purchasing um, a deal worth of 25 billion US dollar uh, for batteries for the electric vehicles for the years 2019 to 2023. Um, when you compare that with um, what the battery prices uh, are for lithium devices in the market, then you roundabout end up with a supply of uh, 100 to 100, uh, well, somewhere between 100 to, to 200 gigawatt hours uh, worth of batteries. Gigawatt hours is 1 million kilowatt hour, correct? And so uh, what you will uh, f see is um, that's a lot of batteries on the one hand side, but it is so much um, that actually five more factories have to be built besides Tesla, uh, the Tesla Gigafactory and, and such, just for uh, to handle that one piece of order for four years. With other words, this is around about one to two million cars uh, worth of, um, uh, of batteries um, annually. Yeah, over the course of four years. Now, when you look at what the car manufacturers are producing uh, today, and the top 10, uh, anywhere between 50 million to, to 100 million cars annually, overall, you know, all, all variations of, of cars. 
Um, and you, and we're talking um, one to two million car production supply is already causing um, a, a, yeah, an increase um, by, by for some uh, lithium battery manufacturers of, of a doubling or tripling their output. Then you can see what will in a couple of years uh, will be a demand in lithium batteries and hence in lithium as the main consumption. Yeah, uh, Jason, let me jump in right there. Uh, it is crazy what's going on. And you mentioned Rick Rule, and you know he's famous for things can trade irrationally longer than investors can stay solvent, or he he's said that. I've heard him repeat that. And I mean, you look at companies like Amazon who have never looked cheap but continue to go higher and higher and higher. Tesla, same thing, not profitable, but um, they continue to to go up. And I think there's an underlying reason, especially for a company like Tesla, who is worth more than Ford, unprofitable, and selling you know 100,000 cars in 2017, uh, being worth more than Ford, who is profitable, selling millions of cars. It's uh, it's the sentiment behind this, and that is what Stefan was talking about, and that is the the electric vehicle shift, this millennial shift that is happening. And I know that leaves a bad taste in a lot of sound money's people's minds because uh, electric vehicles has been subsidized by give big government for so many years. And you know people don't like that, and, and I'm not a fan of it. But what people are failing to understand, and I, I think a lot of people are, are blinding themselves to, is that electric vehicles – the technology is becoming very, very efficient. And, you know, there's estimates out there by 2022, it'll be more economical to drive an electric vehicle than it will be uh, a traditional petro uh, gas powered vehicle uh, unsubsidized. And, you know, with the trend of everyone wanting to be green, China going this direction, France plans to end sales of gas and diesel cars by 2040, uh, Germany, they have these mandates as well. Uh, there's just this huge shift in sentiment. And that goes back to the Amazon, the Tesla story. Uh, when you have just this sentiment that is so powerful, we see what happens with the U.S. stock market and the way the the government and the, the propaganda, they control sentiment. Uh, if you have this sentiment of millennials pushing for green, I mean, this is this can be a lot bigger than, you know, oh, there might be a little oversupply of lithium in the market. This is going to be a really, really big deal going forward here. And I think it's going to happen faster than people think in, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. There might not be that many gas powered vehicles on the road anymore. And I think we should give Elon Musk and Tesla Motors a lot of credit for noticing the market opportunity of making a luxury electric car. Now, I, I, the Tesla Roadster, when I saw a couple of them on the road in the Model S, they're a beautiful car. And so, you know, he was the pioneer. He was the trendsetter in this regard. I think now the operations of the business, Kenneth, like you said, they're not profitable. I think he's promised the market a lot more than he can actually deliver. And he's taken on a lot of debt and then bailed out his cousins in Solar City with shareholder capital. But we have to give Elon Musk credit, though, for actually recognizing that there was demand from people who are affluent who want a, you know, very efficient fancy electric car. And so now you're seeing, I, I, before I started recording this, I was looking at some of the newer uh, car, com uh, the car companies that are planning new electric models. I mean, mo one of the most beautiful ones, Stefan, was the Porsche Mission E. I mean, that luxury car, 600 horsepower, 600 horsepower, it's going to have a supercharger that can supposedly recharge the battery up to 80% in only about 15 minutes. Uh, 300 right. something mile range just really and it's going to be ready I think in about two years and then you have Mercedes and BMW and you know a lot of the other luxury car companies also competing with Tesla so I mean in the whole thing of free market and the whole competition this is good although I think you know now it's going to not necessarily benefit Tesla as much with all this extra competition in the future. Absolutely. I think it's going to be a very interesting thing going forward, considering Tesla is non-profitable and you have all these profitable companies entering the market 
who are going to start competing with them. And when, you know, Ford and Mercedes and Porsche, they really, you know, put the pedal to the metal. Uh, it'll be really interesting for a company like Tesla. But uh, Tesla and Elon Musk obviously have a lot of great marketing behind them. And you can't discount that. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, how things go forward. Yeah, and and I think what uh, what primarily uh, all the new models and and the buzz about uh, bringing these models to the market uh, will drive primarily is further um, acceptance and further um, uh, penetration of electric vehicles as part of the mobility mix um, coming to the market uh, by 2020 uh, primarily um, and uh, and I think uh, we really see the golden 20s of electric mobility coming up um, starting in that time frame by 2022 definitely we should be reaching the critical mass where um, where where the demand will outstrip in particular you know as Canis was saying, the, um, uh, the, the there is no need for subsidization anymore. And to add to your points there, I'm looking at this article in Seeking Alpha. I'll attach a, a link to the info section for our listeners who want to do more research. But it seems that the demand for lithium right now with not too many electric cars on the market, with the auto companies about to, the larger ones that are profitable with regular cars about to roll them out, is already 160 million metric tons today. But they're projecting that to basically triple the demand to triple in lithium by 2025. So that's a yeah. lot of supply that's going to have to be brought online if those estimates are correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And this is, I, I think, you know, when, when we look at, at Wealth Minerals as, um, you know, as uh, the company I'm representing, um, this is uh, part of the story, you know, why we say, well, you know, lithium makes so much sense and it's so interesting because, I mean, this is the main charge carrier in any battery. Um, so there's no way uh, surrounding it. And, uh, and, uh, when you're um, a lithium producer um, uh, coming up, um, I think you cannot go wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. so let me ask you guys some tough questions then about the lithium supply demand market. So I was researching this two years ago before I talked to Rick Rule, and there was a couple things that I was worried about and why I wouldn't look at lithium. So on the supply side, there's Bolivia. So Bolivia is considered by many people to be basically the Saudi Arabia of lithium. They have like evaporation ponds and these salt brines, I guess, for lithium. And so theoretically, they could be the lowest cost producer and have an enormous amount of supply. Why do you think that's not going to be an issue? Well, so uh -huh. tra traditionally, um, the, uh, the the biggest uh, supply area um, in in the lithium market um, has been the Atacama Solar in in Chile, right? Chile has very favorable business conditions, very stable. Uh, government and um, so the um, the opportunity there is is uh, straightforward and so far um, the Atacama Solar has always enjoyed the lowest cost for producers to get uh, brine um, to the surface and get it uh, into a form that it can be uh, manufactured into lithium carbonate which is the uh, the main ingredient um, so um, does uh, Bolivia have a potential uh, to be there? Definitely. Um, the question or wh what you have to look at is um, that you need the driest conditions um, uh, in order to, to have a, a, a low cost production for, uh, for brine mined uh, lithium. And um, so you need a dry climate and you find that in the Atacama Solar, you find it very uh, much on the surface, uh, the main lithium supply that is currently there. Um, and um, so Wells is in that way positioned um, because we uh, own also a, a 47,000 hectare um, uh, area in the Atacama Solar. Um, besides that, we have several other properties in that uh, environment um, or with the same uh, climate um, conditions and that is uh, we we call it Laguna Verde and, and uh, a Trinity project and this is um, uh, same setup same same story um, so uh, do we believe that Bolivia will be lower cost than than Chile I don't know but um, 
but we uh, definitely will enjoy as uh, um, exploiting those resources together with Enami, uh, the government uh, body uh, who we have a cooperation agreement for directly um, exploiting uh, the uh, uh, the projects as well as uh, delivering straight without you know having to pay royalties or granting anything to anybody um, uh, straight onto the market which is uh, again you know a, a way of uh, going forward for the lowest cost production yeah, yeah. I, I if I could chime in real quick I think one of the issues with Bolivia also is the geopolitics because only a couple of years ago they were talking about potentially confiscating mines I know with some of the silver miners I yeah. follow who had investments in Bolivia that was an issue I think the Bolivian government has raised taxes there on the miners and I I'm not I'm not sure if he's still present in Bolivia but uh it wasn't Maduro. I forgot the guy's name, but he was a disciple of Hugo Chavez. So, I yeah. mean, you know, if, if with that threat of geopol uh, not respecting private property rights, the taxes can be increased very quickly. That's not going to get investment there, even if the geology for Bolivia is is good. Sure. And, you know, the, the strategic relationship that Wealth Minerals has in Chile there, I mean, Hank Van Alphen, uh, you know, there's this competitive advantage that they're going to have and Chile is a, a very very important country when it comes to lithium and that's very difficult to to dethrone I mean what a third of all lithium is coming from from Chile and uh, the, the lowest cost producer uh, this is a, a very important thing that going forward will be very hard to to dethrone and even if it is you know you do have some competition elsewhere um you know that's not a problem there it's okay to have competition coming from other places uh but it's again being partnered with the right companies which is why we've made wealth minerals our number one lithium play uh for 2018 here at crush the street and, and it really is a macro play as well we're we're looking at this trend as a whole uh, the same way we did with cryptocurrencies, uh, we didn't get too detailed into you know the the blockchain in, in 2017. You know all of the different smart contracts and you know every bit of nook and cranny that there was. We saw a massive macro opportunity, and you know we capitalized it on it in a very big way, and that's what we're doing here with lithium with the electric vehicle market. Uh, I know Stefan uh, made reference to it, but I mean, it, it really goes to show how big of a deal electric vehicles are gonna be considering that it's 10,000 times the amount of lithium needed that's in a battery, a, a phone than an electric vehicle, which again is is really a big deal, uh, and with this ramping up, you know, exponentially here, China looking to lift and uh, you know get away from their pollution, Europe doing what they can, the U.S. will follow. Uh, this is going to be a, a very very big deal going forward here, and uh, the the possibility, and and Stefan can speak to this uh, for some sort of takeover in. Wealth Minerals going forward here could be very, very, uh, could be a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, um, you know, wealth is a, is a pure play um, lithium um, mining company. Yeah, so we don't, you know, we we don't uh, um, derive. Um, from from various sources or various materials, yeah, we're we're bound to lithium, and uh, and as such, we are probably one of the cleanest plays in the market um, uh, going forward, uh, with certain you know uh, with certain uh, um, steps on the way. Um, let me mention that uh, we currently uh, what we're doing is uh, we are uh, putting drill uh, uh, drilling in place. Um, we will have the results from our main projects uh, back by between uh, a couple of weeks from now on the um, on the Trinity project, um, and then uh, over the course until midsummer, we know exactly what um, uh, the amount of lithium that's in the ground on the properties that 
that Wells Minerals owns, uh, which should, um, once upon we announced this, uh, push the stock up quite uh, quite a bit because now you know what you're evaluating. And as we are, um, we, as we are, we are, we have been moving from you know um, uh, accumulation to um, to um, exploitation. Uh, phase, um, we will in the future, um, either with strategic uh, partners or um, on our own, we will develop uh, the market and uh, we will develop the, the production capabilities going forward actually for, uh, for Wealth Minerals to be one of the uh, main producers in the market uh, coming up in the future. So, so the lithium prices have, for our listeners who haven't been paying attention, the lithium prices have doubled in the last two years, up to $16,500 per metric ton. But the Chilean government, I think earlier this year, they increased the export quota for lithium by about 400% reacting to that higher price. And the shares of pretty much all the lithium companies drastically overreacted on that news and sold off. So that seems to me that like this may be a potential contrarian opportunity to come in and start accumulating positions here that the market may be drastically overreacted on this uh, export quota increase from the Chilean government? Yes, well, I can you tell at- you one thing. Uh, Wealth Minerals has just hit its 52-week low. It was at $1.08 on Friday. And uh, we're seeing uh, some nice movement here coming into the, the new week, uh, recording this here on you know, May 14th. And uh, you know what? This, uh, this is an opportunity. Uh, and it's time to look at these things and to to become a, if you want to ta- accumulate a position, it's the time to do it is when it pulls back. Uh, you know, everyone wants to chase a rising price. You know, uh, they're they're going to be much more interested in gold five thousand than they are gold thirteen hundred. And you know, here with uh, Wealth Minerals, you have an opportunity to get it at you know basically fifty percent off of where it's been. Are, are, Stefan, are the car companies at some point going to panic that they're not going to have reliable supply and look to do like long term offtake agreements uh, with the with the lithium miners? That is already in the making. Let me let me just address this like this. Yeah. So, um, yes, there uh, there are. It, it, it depends a little bit who you talk to. Some people have a more short uh, short sighted view where they say, OK, when my volume picks up, um, then I will two to three years prior. I will uh, put myself in place. Um, others have gone already to uh, to make strategic uh, um, agreements uh, with uh, current producers. Um, I think you will see, you know, um, a, a staged growth uh, with with uh, plateaus, but a constant move up at the moment. Um, and, and for the foreseeable future, because the demand will just out, outpace everything that is coming along in terms of um, production capacities and uh, uh, and so on. So I, I'm I'm very bullish on this uh, over the next five years, um, and it will and it's happening already. And the um, you know uh, the the pullback on the announcement is just because everybody is afraid. Well, this might be a little bit too early to increase such a production level, but we will see very much like in other commodity growth scenarios that um, uh, there is uh, oversupply in, 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 in an exponentially opening market uh, is always short lived, and so people in, in uh, six months from now will probably look back and said, "Well, should I know?" on my strategic accumulation. And this doesn't sound like the rare earth bubble because there wasn't this demand that there is from the auto companies. This is not a long-term trend necessarily compared to these electric vehicles. So the car companies are all serious about bringing out competing models to compete with Tesla. Whereas, you know, with the rare earth, there was a lot of buzz around it that China would would shut off the supply. Uh, one more question, Stefan, on the lithium ion batteries themselves. So. I read a lot of articles on different battery technology potentially being tested and having some success in the lab. So why Mm -hmm. do you think lithium ion batteries are going to win over these other battery technologies for electric cars and electric vehicles for the next five or 10 years? Well, two two aspects to this. Um, Good good that you asked that. Um, Two aspects to this. Uh, One is um, 
the lithium ion batteries and and there's uh, typically only one variation that is currently in discussion that is um, the nmc or nickel manganese cobalt variation um who has uh, the the highest energy density and and remember each electron that is uh, being charged uh, into the battery um, is uh, is sticking to a lithium atom. Um, so that means that, um, you know, the more energy dense you want to get, the more lithium you, uh, you use. Um, the other aspect um, that you have to consider is that in, in comparison to other technologies um, is the lightweight. Lithium is a very light material, so um, uh, you can pack a lot of it into the cars without uh, exuberantly increasing the um, uh, the weight of the car. Um, so in in that sense, uh, you can pack it very tightly, very, uh, very neatly, and uh, at the same time, it's very lightweight. Those are the, the two major aspects why I think that there is no alternative currently um, to uh, or for for an electric vehicle in the market. Yeah, well, and that's one of the things about resources in general. Uh, they're finite. And when you're talking about physical commodities, uh, that's a, a finite thing. And there's only so many uh, finite commodities out there that can serve these kind of purposes. So uh, that's something that's very strategic, you know, about lithium. Uh, they're calling it, they've called it white gold in the past. But, I mean, this is really white petroleum here in the, the 21st century. So it is really exciting going forward here. Now, Stefan, you have been heavily involved with the integration of electric vehicle infrastructure in both residential and in, in industrial areas. Please talk to us about the converging trends in regards to lithium as a commodity and the demand for the electric car revolution. So, so you think then that this is gonna be one of the most powerful trends coming to any market in the next five or 10 years? Um, yes, definitely. I think that, that this is a, a, a seesaw um, uh, change that we're, that we're undergoing right now. It's a, a true infrastructure change. And uh, we have seen this in the 90s with the telecom industry going from a, a fixed line uh, over to a mobile um, a phone environment. Um, we saw the same with data conversion network with the internet and so on, and we can potentially see the same levels um, with the electric mobility um, revolution going forward. Now, uh, because you mentioned infrastructure where I've been involved in, um, uh, two things. Um, when you want to have an adoption of a new consumer product, and let's face it, an electric vehicle or like every vehicle is a is a consumer product, um, at least on the on the uh, car side. Um, so that means that you don't want to change too much of a consumer behavior. And what you need for that is fast charging infrastructure in order to, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the the Porsche um, uh, Mission E is is uh, a a car that is supposed to recharge within 15 minutes. When when you look at this and you look at today uh, electricity grid systems, we haven't talked about those at all. Um, just another exciting market for lithium battery cells or, uh, or energy storage systems. Um, deriving from the infrastructure, the need for fast charge, when you go in 15 minutes from, uh, let's say, uh, to a 300 kilowatt charge level, which is you know, quite a big number. Um, you don't have this uh, to plug in in your house, uh, so you need dedicated charging stations. And uh, but uh, typically, where the charging stations are uh, along the highway, you don't have 300 kilowatt uh, just being available there at once. And that's one charge point. When you look at several charge points, like in a typical highway scenario, like you know, when you think of today's um, gas stations, uh, they have multiple uh, uh, multiple uh, um, filling points, and um, and so you do the same with with electric. Well, you very quickly in the megawatt range. Now, how do you overcome this? Well, you overcome this typically by putting a battery on the infrastructure side as well. And guess what? You need high power and you need density. So then um, again, here comes lithium uh, battery systems into play where you charge slowly on um, the, uh, the battery bank up and then uh, you discharge for um, car refueling uh, in quick bursts. And this is an, uh, yet another exciting applications. And in order to, uh, to 
um, make this uh, infrastructure and the electricity where it's being, uh, where the electric mobility uh, fleets are being uh, charged from, um, you want to, you know, get off the the CO2 train and, and want to rather convert to renewable energy like wind and solar uh, for generating the power that's being uh, used to fuel our cars. All right. Well, you know, and it's really exciting, too, when you consider the change that's happening and the technology that's taking place. I can tell you as a consumer, and I feel like I'm somebody who has been able to uh, you know, analyze people, understand people's habits to make money in the markets. And I just see electric cars being inconvenient, at least up until now. And we know this is changing and lithium is going to make that possible and the technology behind that and, and the amount of money that there will be to be made in this sector is going to highly incentivize people to go into this space and to develop the technologies and make it convenient for people to buy an electric car and to charge it fast and efficiently. And they're putting, you know, I know Tesla's putting their charging stations all over the place. Uh, you see them popping up in front of Whole Foods and, and grocery stores and all over the country. And, you know, once you, again, have this tipping point of people saying, okay, this is doable. I mean, that's when you're really going to see things ramp up. And then you add on top of that the fact that it's becoming affordable. Uh, it's now economical to own an electric vehicle mm -hmm. over a, a traditional gas-powered car. Uh, I mean, these converging trends, it, it's going to be, again, a major change for the sentiment of the buyer. And once the sentiment really starts to kick into gear, which it is, the millennial generation is all about it. They're, they are now larger than the baby boomer generation. Once that really kicks in, you know, we're, we're really off to the races here. This isn't going to be a fad. This is going to be a long-term trend that, uh, you know, I, I think my kids are going to experience. Yeah, Mercedes and BMW, if I could add to that, Ken, Mercedes and BMW are both launching electric SUVs. So that and you so you have a booming now sports luxury electric sports car market with all the luxury guys. I think even Ferrari and Bentley and those guys are going to be involved in that in the near future. And then you have luxury ex, uh, electric SUVs too. So this is this is not going away. Tesla may you know what whatever Don, uh, I think the famous quote that Doug Casey likes to say is the pioneer gets shot full of arrows. So Tesla has some f uh, problems with their balance sheet and their financial statement. They haven't been profitable, but they've definitely set the trend here with you know the the SUVs. I think they're working on. Uh, they have the big rig truck and they have a couple other, I think they have a pickup truck. I, I listened to that weird Elon Musk conference call that was in the last couple weeks and he says something about a Tesla pickup truck too. So they're, yeah. they're definitely disrupting the market here. Now, in terms of the stock, Stefan, for wealth, for wealth minerals, what do you think are the near term catalysts that would maybe move the stock higher? Well, I can tell you as soon as we, uh, we will uh, detail um, development on on the drilling program that's uh, currently in in uh, yeah in last planning stages and should commence in a, in a few couple of weeks. Uh, we will definitely um, see that they uh, that this is a major milestone. Yeah, we will be able to identify the uh, the quality of the brines, um, which will um, which will. Given all historical data that is available from uh, previous drilling, and, and as you uh, as you can understand, uh, we're working in the same solar um, border to border to the current producers. Yeah, so I, I I would I would be surprised if we see any surprises in the quality being less than than that what we uh, know from uh, the established uh, production side. Um, so. Uh, from that perspective, you know, uh, we will uh, qualify, quantify um, uh, these results, and then I think I would see the stock really going higher because then we are in a, on a one-to-one -one comparison to um, uh, other um, established uh, brine quality um, yeah, producers. And there was also some insider buying on Wealth Minerals too uh, earlier in May. So you, it seems that, that more people inside your company are putting their money where their mouth is and buying the stock on the step. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, I think we are all very bullish on on, uh, on this going forward. 
um, because the, we have been uh, we have been seeing um, you know um, how uh, the program unfolds. We cleared the way. We de-risked the. Um, uh, the situation for exploitation rights and and and, uh, and, and um, uh, export uh, declarations. You know, um, we have uh, gotten that out of the way. Now it's down to to execution, basically on um, on developing these ones. Yeah. So so closing thoughts for for either of you guys as we wrap this up. Is there anything that I didn't cover? I didn't mention that you guys wanted to talk about. I, you know, maybe I'll just start. Uh, first of all, Jason, thanks for having us on. Uh, it's it's a real pleasure. And you know, one thing that I like to focus on are trends for the future. And I feel like you know, in the mainstream media, we always hear about things that are uh, happening that that is old news. Previously, you know, what what happened in the past, right? You know what the stock market is doing. Everyone's excited about stocks. Everyone's excited about earnings. About the Dow Jones going to, you know, all-time highs. But yet, you know, when 2010, when it was a lot more attractive arithmetically, nobody was looking at it. So, you know, I want to look at a trend here that I believe is going to be the the next five to ten years, and really a, a lot longer than that. But especially in this time now, you know, for, for lithium, as it pertains to wealth minerals, uh, this is a very exciting time to be looking at, you know, how this trend is happening and that tipping point of people fully embracing, you know, what's going to happen in transportation. Uh, this is going to happen. I know a lot of people don't like that. There's a lot of car enthusiasts out there. There's a lot of people who, again, you know, associate electric vehicles with, you know, big government and subsidies. But this is really changing. And that's something that I, I want to talk to people about, you know, and, and just educate people on and, you know, maybe open some minds of people who are, are really closed off to, to this idea. I think there's going to be a lot of money to be made here, and, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Any closing thoughts from you, Stefan, that I, uh, topics or questions that I didn't get to? Yeah, Jason, thank you so much uh, also um, uh, from my side for having us on, on your show. Um, we are, I mean, we at Wells Minerals, we are definitely looking positive into the future, and we see uh, that the that the, uh, the the short as well as the long term trends are um, are really um, moving um, in the right direction. We see that uh, the demand will be um, will be uh, increasing dramatically. Um, so that it allows us to be uh, to become one of the major players in the market without even cannibalizing other players. But at the same time, with our um, low cost production of, uh, um, uh, plan, um, I think in, in every market we will be one of the major suppliers in the lithium world. Um, and um, we are uh, convinced that we can show to the world that um, that we are definitely um, a player that uh, will, will, will benefit from this uh, mega trend in the 21st century. So a couple points before we end this discussion that, that I've been noticing. So you, Ken, you talked about how uh, lithium is such a powerful long-term trend now with electric vehicles. You know, I, on the mainstream financial media, I hear Tesla talked about all the time, maybe they show some of the new concept cars for the electric vehicles. No one. Uh, out of all the financial TV I've watched over the years has ever discussed the potential problems with lithium supply. I've never heard it mentioned once. So that's something I guess they just assume the supply is going to be created out of thin air. <laughs> but this is this this electric vehicle market, though, this is not the original electric vehicles like the uh, General Motors EV1, which was, you know, really cheap piece of junk. It was for the time it was. It was interesting. But this is the market that we are going to now, there are serious players involved. They're putting serious money in. There will be really nice, beautiful luxury cars. And even the Chevy Volt, which was uh, some people like the Chevy Volt, and that was, you know, GM's updated version. The Chevy Volt's going to pale in comparison compared to what's coming out in just the next couple years uh, with Mercedes Benz, BMW, and I think the most beautiful car I've seen lately is the, the Porsche Mission E. I think that thing looks pretty incredible. It's beautiful. Good deal.
Yeah. Well, well, if you guys want to uh, give our listeners the information so they can ke- uh, follow the story, because I think they should, they're going to want updates on the story. This is not something that's going to go away anytime soon. That's going to crash because there's, you know, the, the, the other point I wanted to mention was with the car companies, these are big car companies. They are making money. So there, you mentioned that the electric vehicles were subsidized for a while. Well, the car companies, the regular ones can, don't get a subsidy. So they got to put it, their money where their mouth is. They're not getting a bailout. Well, probably not going to get another bailout. <laughs> but yeah, so they got to put their money where their mouth is, and they got to make some investments and hope that they pay off in the in these new electric vehicle models. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's a, it's an exciting thing. Uh, you know, we're covering it at Crush the Street. If people want uh, just like the initial write up on it, they can visit crushthestreet.com slash wm and uh, they can sign up there and get our regular updates on wealth minerals again it's our number one lithium pick here for 2018 uh really excited about it and especially right now again coming off 52 week lows here uh it's it's the time to look at it not when it doubles and and triples even though it's got the potential to do that and you know the i feel it's got the potential to do that in short order here yeah I, i'm a contrarian before stefan uh tells our listeners how to follow his company yeah i'm a contrarian so if a stock does crash especially you know what the weird thing is the prices of the lithium market have doubled so it sounds like market participants have drastically overreacted to that news out of chile with the export quota being raised yeah that's probably um uh, a true assessment of the situation. Um, it's truly an overreaction. But um, if you want to follow the story, um, I would like to, to guide you to our website. That's www.worldsminerals.com. And uh, we have news feeds there as well. So uh, we're also on Twitter, um, hashtag World Minerals. And um, we, we definitely uh, like to get in touch with any interested investor and uh, give some more insights um, upon short notice. Well, thank you both for your time. And this was an interesting discussion. Hopefully our listeners like it, that we're expanding our coverage base because you know this is kind of the convergence of new technology, commodities, and uh, potential innovation here, which could potentially uh, help the environment as well. Sure. Please like this video, share it with friends and family, And don't forget to subscribe to the Wall Street for Main Street YouTube channel if you have not already done so. We're closing in on the 20,000 YouTube channel subscriber milestone, despite YouTube censorship. And hopefully we'll be able to get to 30,000 or even 40,000 YouTube channel subscribers quickly if YouTube doesn't shut down the channel. If YouTube does shut down this channel, remember to also sign up for the Wall Street for Main Street email list that's on the wallstreetformainstreet.com website and will tell you where the videos are going to be uploaded instead of YouTube. Also, if you really like the content and you decide that you want to give a one-time donation, you can go to the wallstreetformainstreet.com website where there's different options for you to do so. Or you can become a Patreon contributor. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to providing you guys with some of the best information, analysis, and financial education available out there for free or paid.